that at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what were the Jews doing in Medina? Has anyone asked themselves that, this question? How did they come to Medina? They came to Medina because in the Torah and the Talmud that the Jews believe in, there was description of the land in which the final messenger would come. And this final messenger was mentioned in the Torah. And the description was that this place would have date palms. And there were several other descriptions which fitted precisely to Medina to Munawwara. And that is why they all flocked to Medina to Munawwara. From amongst them were their leaders and the general public and so on. One day when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made hijrah from Mecca to Medina, Abdullah ibn Salam who happened to be one of the Jewish leaders, he was working in a farm of his around Medina. And he noticed the cloud moving. He noticed a group of people moving. And he noticed so many other signs. He was a rabbi. He noticed so many signs. He said, no, today is the day. We have all been waiting for so long. Today is the day that this prophet is going to come. So he left his work and he went towards this crowd of people who were blocking his view. He wanted to see the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he knew as soon as I see the face, I'm going to recognize whether he is a prophet or not. Because he'd seen all the other signs, the cloud was covering wherever he was and so on. So then he came and he had a peep at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And immediately he declared, this is the prophet of Allah. I bear witness that you are the prophet that we are waiting for. Subhanallah. So all the people around began to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Do you know that this is the leader of the Jews? He is accepting Islam. He has come here and he is declaring that you are a messenger according to the description of the Torah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him and said, Ya Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Salam, come here. You are one of the leaders of the Jews. Why don't you go to the Jews and inform them that the messenger has arrived? So he said, Ya Rasulullah, I know my people. They will turn away. They will not listen even to me when it comes to their desires. I hope the Muslim Ummah is not doing this today. That when it comes to their desires, we are not interested in what is right and wrong anymore. We are interested in our own desires. Abdullah ibn Salam mentioned that this was a quality of his own people. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, try with them at least. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made Abdullah ibn Salam go behind the wall. And the Jews were called of Medina. And he asked them, who is Abdullah ibn Salam? They said, he is our leader and the son of our leader. He is the most honest from amongst us and the son of the most honest. He is one of our champions and the son of the champion. He is a brother and the son of a brother. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what if I were to tell you that he accepted me as a prophet? They said, that is impossible. We don't even want to discuss that because it cannot happen. So Abdullah ibn Salam emerged from the back and said, Inni ashhadu alla ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Immediately all the congregation who were there from amongst his people began to say, He is the liar and his father was a liar. He is a cheater and his father was a cheater. He is the worst and his father was the worst. And Abdullah ibn Salam looked at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him, Do you know? Didn't I tell you, I know my people better than anyone else. So then what had happened? Banu Quraidah and Banu Nadir. These are the two clans of the Jews whom Abdullah ibn Salam had belonged to. They did not talk to Abdullah ibn Salam and the few who had accepted Islam with him. They didn't want to sit with them. They didn't want to associate with them. There was no intermarriage even between their children or even themselves. Absolutely no form of communication between them and their own people. So this used to touch them in their hearts. So they came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and complained. Abdullah ibn Salam himself said, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ever since we have accepted Islam, these people don't talk to us. They don't want to associate with us. They don't want to sit with us. They don't want to us to intermarry in any way whatsoever. And we don't have any friends now. Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam came down with verses. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ Abdullah ibn Salam and the group, don't worry at all. Don't worry that you don't have friends. Your friend is Allah. Your friend is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your friends are all the believers, those who establish salah and those who give zakah whilst they are in ruku'ah. Subhanallah. 
He was so comforted with this and he always used to say, SubhanAllah, Allah has befriended me. Allah has befriended me. I complained I didn't have friends. What happens to us today? We decide to become a little bit religious. Sometimes a person becomes slightly religious. Some of his own or her own family members excommunicate them. Don't worry, Allah is your friend. Don't worry, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is your friend. Don't worry, the believers are your friends, inshallah. May Allah comfort us as well. If people have excommunicated you because you have now stood up for justice and the truth, don't worry, you are heading in the right direction, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us companionship of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now you might have noticed, as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam noticed, that in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who establish salah and give zakah whilst they are in ruku'ah. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was wondering what is meant by this. As he walked out, he saw a beggar. He was going towards his masjid and he saw a beggar. And on one side, he could see his masjid. And he could see some of the companions who were standing in salah, some of them were in ruku' and so on. So he asked this beggar because he knows that zakah is to do with giving. Has anyone given you anything today? He said, yes, I was given this ring. Who gave you this ring? So the beggar pointed at Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the beggar, in what position of salah was he when he gave you the ring? And the beggar said he was in ruku'. He took out his ring and gave it to me. Allahu Akbar. So he gave the ring minutes, minutes before this. And at that particular time, Jibreel was already there revealing the verses that your friend Abdullah ibn Salam is even Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu who happened to give zakat whilst he was in ruku'. Now some of us might ask, is it allowed to give zakat whilst you are in ruku'? Let me inform you that at that time, it was even allowed to speak a few words in salah. But when Allah revealed the verse, وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Stand for the sake of Allah with total and utmost concentration. It became prohibited to speak. It became prohibited to make unnecessary movements in salah. So up to today, that is the ruling. But at that time, it was still permissible. That is why Ali radiallahu anhu has been praised in the Quran and he is regarded as a friend of Abdullah ibn Salam and a friend of all those who have been oppressed in one way or another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true understanding.